Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Chaos Head. So, last part we uh, got given a quest by Shogun to uh, go ahead and save Nanami, our little sister. And as a present, he gave us a severed hand holding a cell phone that is the same model as ours, which is also the same model of phone she had. The arm also had, well, I say a severed arm. It was a severed hand because it was cut off a little bit past the uh, wrist. Um, and it had a little yellow bangle on it and it had a little garrow froggy thing as well. I assume on the cell phone because I believe that was a cell phone strap if I recall correctly. But yeah, so that's a thing. Let's go ahead and get my timer started, though. Uh, what I'm about to discuss is somewhat specialized. Kimiwamutoishidaru. しかし実際には各神経の先端にある手と手の間には極わずかな隙間が空いているんですよ。脳細胞に情報の電気信号が送り出されると、その神経の手のひらから極小の物質、ドーパミンがボールのように飛び出してきます。I'm curious if dopamine is actually translated. There's a uh, translated here for the uh I'm going to go ahead and say no. No, it isn't. So, yep. That's just one of the many terms in the glossary that are uh, still not translated at all. Either the listings on the side or the actual uh, contents of that particular listing. また隣の脳細胞に伝わっていく。脳の構造は簡単に言うとその繰り返しです。我が社が開発した第二世代ノア2はこの部分に干渉することで人に疑似的な映像を見せることを可能としました。うん。ホログラムのようなものか。No. No, not in the slightest. あるいは幻覚かな? I would say hallucination is probably more accurate if you have to pick one of the two. Hallucination is closer to what he's describing. Um, well, what he's describing the use of Noah 2 as, rather. Compared to hologram, which... No. ...現確の方が近いでしょう。ですが、明確に違う点として、その疑似的映像は確かな存在感があるものとして映る。ということです。人間の目。視覚というのは実に興味深いものです。視野は単眼の場合、鼻側60度。耳側100度程度。両眼の重複視野は120度で、周辺視野を含めれば180度から200度もの視界が広がっているんです。その一方で、以前ご説明したようなデッドスポットもまた存在する。脳にとって視覚とは最も繋がりの深い部位です。脳はそのおよそ80%を視神経情報の処理のためだけに使っている。その点については300人委員会も注目しておる。人間の視覚にはまだま
let's go ahead and see. Um, yeah, mm-hmm, 1997, a memorandum from the Secretary of Defense, or memorandum for the Secretary of Defense, the Attorney General, the Secretary of Agriculture, the Secretary of Commerce, the Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Housing and Urban Development, Transportation, and Veteran Affairs. Uh, the Department of Central Intelligence, Administrator of the Environmental Protections Agency, Administrator of the Agency for International Development, Administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Director of the National Space Foundation, the Chair of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Director of the House of Science and Technology Policy, and the Chair of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, and, well, the title seems to, the very first line seems to imply that that was a memorandum from the president. Also, I don't know if it would really be a government order. It's just a memorandum. Kind of a different thing than a government order.三百人委員会はどこの馬の骨とも知れん研究者がこの分野に足を踏み入れることを歓迎せん。当然ながらアメリカだけではなく世界各国にも同様の指示は出ている。我が国は随分自由のようですね。私のような人間を放置しているぐ
理論値通りに稼働を始めればギガロマニアックスたちと同等いや近い将来それ以上の能力を再現できるようになりますだが効果の有効範囲はどうなっている電磁波は垂れ流しなのかねそれでは汎用性という点がおろそかになる我々は無差別な洗脳を望んでおるわけではない対象は選定できなければ無意味だぞご心配なくそのために機能因子を用意してありますモニターをご覧くださいなんだこの小汚い連中は我が社ではポーターと呼んでいます Oh, we've seen these backpacks before. 言い換えればマインドコントロールのための舞台といったところでしょうか彼らが背負っているリュックの中にはノア2のパルス波を操受信するためのポートが入っていますポートは信号を受け取るとリモートで周囲へと放出するわけですうん<笑>歩く端末というわけかそれならば有効範囲の制限などないに等しいな。Presumably you would potentially need multiple of these depending on how far away your target is that you're attempting to hit. And that's assuming that these things can relay between each other. 限定的使用も問題ないことになるね。状況は理解した。貴様は引き続き計画を続行したまえ。ただし、三百人委員会に悟られるような言動はくれぐれも慎むよう。あとは何人犠牲を出そうと構わん。ご理解いただきありがとうございます。それでは、ポーターとして使える人材を提供していただきたいです。手配しよう。それと引き続き、先生方にはメディアのコントロールをお願いいたします。すべては。我ら三人の目指す理想のため<笑> oh, Okay, that's immediately jumping into delusion. Yep. ねえ、タッキー。聞こえてるしょ、うん、聞こえてるよ、セラタン。I don't think we have the ability to do that though. Game. Okay, Sarah's just telling us to go ahead and abandon our little sister who may or may not be missing an, a hand. So, 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 And the reason I say may or may not is because she may not, in fact, actually be missing an arm, a,、uh, excuse me, a hand.、Uh, that could be Shogun making use of any potential powers he has. To sort of manifest a hand that's been severed, that's like Nanami's. <laughs> okay.、Uh, I, had dram uh, I had jammed my Sarah figure into my uniforms in her pocket. I taken Sarah with me as a protection, or、uh, yeah, a protective charm. Under ordinary circumstances, I'd never even carry a figure around with me. If nothing else, there was this danger that it'd get damaged. As an otaku, breaking one of my darling wives was my number one taboo. 
but I could no longer afford to maintain that policy of mine. For now, I wanted moral support. I might not even be alive tomorrow, but... I took one last peek down at Sarah, whose face stuck out from inside my pocket. By doing so, I somehow succeeded in frightening back... or yeah, Fighting back my seeping tears. Somebody collided with me from behind, and I staggered. When I looked over, a thuggish man was giving me a disagreeable stare, but he didn't complain to me and soon disappeared into the crowd. I surveyed the area. There should be a scramble crossing. There was a vast crowd of people, one that made it hard to think it was nine on a weekend night, not to mention a day when an earthquake with over 100 fatalities had taken place. I felt like I would suffocate from just waiting for the light to change. Front, back, right, left. People were everywhere. And all of them were raising their voices as one great mass, as if they were cheering on teams at a soccer match. I don't know why, but apparently the mass media was flooding in as well. People carrying huge cameras crowded into the street, stopping the flow of cars. The photography lights lit up here and there were overbright. People resembling reporters faced the cameras and spoke hard- eh, spoke heatedly about something or other. A number of police officers were observing the passerby, or passersby and the media crews who jointed out into the road, but it wasn't the kind of situation they could easily rein in. It was more or less turning into a pedestrian utopia. Were they holding some kind of event on a day like this at a time like this? How inappropriate, considering that a hundred plus people had died, wouldn't they consider taking things more seriously? On top of that, the media had joined them in their uproar. Man, Japan was done with. Not that it mattered much to me. <laughs> O front, the building designated by Shogun, was located right by the pedestrian scramble. Tatsuya, Sutaba, and other stores could be found in it. I hadn't truly meant to come alone, but I hadn't been able to get in contact with Rimi. Since it was possible that the police still wrongly thought of me as being the new gen perp, I couldn't report it to them either. Well, I thought about doing such things the time Shogun had set, kept approaching, and worry. Fernanami started to drive me up the wall. And so I couldn't stop myself from coming here, Sarah in hand. Cutting my way through the sea of people, I managed to get inside O Front. But its interior too was quite packed. I didn't even have room to get fed up with this. The only things my head had been filled with were prayers for Nanami's well-being. I took the escalator to the upper floors. I could look down on the scramble crossing through the S Sutaba's windows, there was an astonishing number of people there, after all. Furthermore, all of them were waving or bobbing up, making little jumps and countless black heads undulated. Hold on. It was clearly brighter here than when I'd been down there. It was enough to make me wonder if all the spotlights were aimed in my direction. Each time the escalator carried me to a higher floor, my heartbeat grew more ferocious. When I took out my cell phone to see the time, it was a minute past the promised time of 9. If Shogun got pissed off by this and killed Nanami, the thought of it made me go cold, and I sprinted my way up the escalator, pushing aside the customers ahead of me. Midway through, I switched to an elevator and took it to the highest floor. I didn't know how to climb to the roof from there, but as I wandered around, careful not to catch anyone's attention, I soon found a back staircase. I succeeded in reaching the roof at once without receiving anyone's censure. The wind was strong up on the roof, a terrible lukewarm wind. Given that it was nearly the end of October, I soon realized it wasn't a natural wind, but rather air expelled by the outdoors portion of the air conditioning system. I closed my front buttons to prevent Sarah from coming flying out. <laughs> I was a little relieved to hear Sarah's voice in my head. If Sarah were with me, I... I wouldn't be scared. I desperately attempted to convince myself of it. Even so, it was dark. The only illumination came from the back of the neon O-front sign. I keep saying O-front, but it might be zero-front. I'm not 100% certain. In contrast, the neon of the surrounding building was too bright. 
or the surrounding buildings was too bright, making it hard to see. Even if someone were hiding in the shadows, I had a feeling that I definitely wouldn't spy them out. Oh, well, hmm. When someone called to me out of the blue, my heartbeat, which had just started to slow down a little, began banging again. I looked around, but it was too dim to tell where he had spoken from. I heard a sound, a creaking sound, one I had heard numerous times before. This time, I deliberately focused my gaze on the other side of the darkness. There, I found the shining, albeit backlit, wheels of his wheelchair. <gasps> Show gun. He voiced my name in a friendly way. The uncanniness of it made me have goosebumps. I didn't want to talk to Shogun. He frightened me. I wanted to run away from here immediately. Well, thanks for that, Seira. But Nanami. I don't know how I'm supposed to take that. Hey, this Shogun was strange. He differed somehow from when we'd met before. Right. His voice. His voice was weird. Well, thank you for just making everything fucking creepy. Yeah, mm, like I said, thanks for making everything fucking creepy. What was going on? His voice kept transforming. Was he using a machine or something? Did he want to conceal his identity by hiding his voice? But why now? Besides, I didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> yeah, the Sarah's right about this. The things Sarah tells me are always, always the most correct. Are they really, though? Like, uh, are they really? I clenched Sarah's body through my clothes. Nanami, <laughs> Oh, it turns out she was fine all along. It seemed like fear would make my heart... Would make my heart leapt from my mouth. Why past tense of leap? More accurately, it seemed like fear would make my heart leap from my mouth. Even so, I frantically forced my voice out. I thought scenes like this occurred only on TV or in games. Nanami is Nanami can be whatever we want. I, well, you know, not really, obviously, but why not? Why not? Clearly we are... Our delusions have some degree of power. But he might not have actually cut her hand off. You gotta remember, delusions and shit. Theoretically, it's possible that Shogun has the power to manifest delusions much like we do. So he deluded Nanami's severed hand into existence and gave us that. Considering that uh, when we got the email, the we yeah, when we read the message, it was an hour and a half ago or something like that in game. I would think if you get your hand cut off and you don't get it treated fairly quickly. You might have already died of blood loss, or if by some miracle you're not already dead of blood loss, you're on the verge of that already. And there's probably like no real chance of helping you. After an hour and a half of having your hand cut off. So if we assume that that was in fact her actual hand that was cut off, it seems a little bit unlikely that she would still be alive now an hour and a half later. Tears fell. Nanami's sulky face rose at the back of my head, eh, at the back of my mind. She'd been insolent. Frankly, she'd been a pain. Despite that, I was grief-strucken. 
sad enough that tears could come out. Nanami wa... Nanami wa... Boku no imoto nanda. Nande koroshi tanda. Hidoi yo. Shinda to omou. But why the fuck wouldn't we? You sent us a severed hand. As the MC, we have zero reason to think that you would somehow manage to be able to delude a severed hand into existence. As the player, however, I have reason to believe that you might. Sure, it might, but it also had her bangle, which admittedly is... Unless it's a one-of-a-kind thing. Probably dozens of other people at least have. But what are the chances that in Shibuya, there's two people with the same bangle, the same phone model, at least, in the same color, I believe, because I'm pretty sure her phone is also yellow when we've seen it, and it was yellow in the severed hand there. And with the Garo Froggy thing. What are the chances that you manage to find somebody who meets all the same criteria and you sever their hand and send that to us to make us believe that it's Nanami's? <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could have taken her stuff and gave it to the severed hand. That's a possibility. But I feel like that's a little bit too much blood on it. On the, uh, on the bracelet for that to quite make sense. Nanami is alive. Quest. Shogun used that word again. Did he want me to get into it like I was playing a game? But... But in reality, I'm no hero. His voice abruptly went as cold as a blade. It was pathetic of me to cover in fear of an old... Or to cower in fear of an old man, but... He was abnormal, after all. He was the true new gen criminal. I'm chosen? Well, that doesn't seem particularly likely because if he wanted us as his next victim, he probably would have already killed us and then done whatever freaky shit he's going to do this time. Recalling the wretched face of the victims in the sequence of new gen incidents, I shriveled. Or I shivered, rather. Well, yes, vaguely I do recall. Well, that's what you were talking about. I thought you were talking about the earthquake. I mean, obviously, that's also an important thing. And also is the one that actually occurred in the afternoon. The earthquake, I believe, was earlier, and then we were knocked out for like an hour or two or something like that. If I'm recalling correctly, at least. Shogun had mentioned the ruckus about ISA's failed suicide attempt in his email. He must have been watching the hubbub from somewhere. Or maybe, you know, Steins gate it. Shogun's from the future. Or else... He was a culprit, and he'd used mind control to make her commit suicide. Well, technically, we don't know that. Would we? 
Like, as far as we know, she didn't die on impact, but there's technically nothing stopping from her being in a coma. And potentially not pulling through the coma. You know, that's a possibility, for all we know. Ashoka knew about the power I was supposed to possess. At the time, no one on the spot had wondered about the flower bed. Only Senna had recognized it for what it was, and Senna had said this to me. Yes, we had, for a split second. I think we need to tell Sarah to shut up. And timer's about to go off, but I think we're going to be nearing the end of this segment, and the last part technically went a little short, so we'll let this go a little long. So long as this doesn't drag on for too long. I... I see. Maybe Shogun dogged at me. Maybe Shogun was trying to kill me. Because I possessed the power, or I possessed that power, or whatnot. If I claimed I didn't have any power, he might let me slip away. <laughs> Well, that seems like a big fat lie. Nope, shit. Might have said something a little... <laughs> Might have said a little too much. Ah, crap. Well, thanks for calling us an otaku creep who does nothing but fap to you. That's right. It was self-centered and juvenile to think I had a unique ability. Then how the fuck do you explain the flower bed that poofed into existence after we thought about it? I realize our character is not the brightest. Really? Senna and I say had told me all kinds of things, and I'd totally begun to buy into it. But for starters, they were obviously kind of mental. I think we're kind of mental too. I have to be off my rocker to unquestioningly swallow the words of a mental patient. Only one of them was actually in a mental uh, institute at all. As far as we know. Senna, as far as we know, has never been in a mental institute. Even Rimi had said, Isn't that itself a delusion? How about no, Shogun? I think we might have said a little too much. Don't know what you're talking about. That flower bed was always there. Technically, I don't think Shogun ever accused us of having anything to do with the flower bed yet, at least. We were the ones who brought up powers, and then he was like, I didn't say anything about any powers. Our character needs to learn when to shut up. Like I said, our character needs to learn when to shut up. He would suck at basically any card game, like poker or any of those other card games like it. I acknowledge nothing. Ugh. I might have dug my own grave again. You don't say. More importantly, who the hell was Shogun? When he implied that the other students and teachers had said so, it couldn't mean he had spoken to them himself, could it? If you don't know how you did something, you might just have a power. Shut up, Sarah. You're really not helping. Well, how the fuck else do you explain a flower bed magically materializing and apparently everybody else thinking, 
Oh, that's always been there. Are we really in reality, though? Is it not technically theoretically possible for us to have been on that bus when we were a kid and this whole thing about having powers, delusions, all of it is just... Our mind being fucking weird while we're in a coma or something. Theoretically, you could tell a story like that if you wanted to. Did we? I don't really recall if we did. But I'm assuming we did since she's asking the question. Oh. I hadn't touched her. Then what about the flower bed? And we're supposed to... So according to Sarah, we're supposed to believe that that flower bed was always there from the very start. And yet we are a, what, like... Second year student or something at this school, I think. I don't think we're a first year, but I might. Maybe we are. But I, for some reason, I thought we were a second year. Like, and we're presumably a pretty decent. Either way, even if we're a first year, this is presumably a decent ways into the semester. Um, or term or whatever. Um, I want to assume that we probably would know where a lot of these things are. You know, these flower beds being strewn about. So, uh, I would honestly really like it if Sarah would just shut up and leave us alone. That doesn't mean anything, though. And that might actually be an argument that could fly. If, of course, we didn't know about, you know, the way this story is here. Again, you might have a point. Under normal circumstances. This is not normal circumstances, however. I repeated what Sarah had said.僕の脳内での妄想だよ。だって、みんなあそこには花壇があったって言ってるんでしょ。力とかそういう訳のわからないものじゃなくて、ただの思い込みだったんだ。いや、君には力がある。そうだろ。死にたくない。そうだろ。
下のスクランブル交差点がよく見えるところまで行ってほしい逃げなきゃこのままじゃ本当に殺されちゃうよ聞こえなかったスクランブル交差点を見下ろせるところへ移動するんだ His tone was soft, but his voice had an incredibly chilly quality to it. Well, yes, voice changers will do that. A voice so fine tuned that it seemed to take the energy I needed to resist him and rip it out of my. out by the roots. My legs trembled and I couldn't walk. I hugged myself. I even lost the ability to judge whether or not I should heed what he was saying. I struggled to squeeze out a cracking voice, but Shogun instantly brushed aside my plea. Ugh. I didn't want to think Nanami had died. I didn't want to imagine a dead Nanami. I was scared that once I pictured her, it'd become real. Resigning myself, I did as Shogun had said and began walking for a better view of the scramble crossing. The area at my feet was dark, and I tripped if I didn't proceed with caution. The side of the roof closest to the pedestrian scramble had a transparent acrylic plate jutting up like a wall. It was roughly three stories high. As I neared that wall, I came to hear a roar from the crossing below me. A single female voice particularly caught my ear, but apparently it was coming from the Jumbotron mounted on a neighboring building. Wiping cold sweat off my forehead, I examined the wall in a rush, moving only my eyes. One place did have a hole in it, large enough for a single person to pass through while standing. It was shaped unnaturally as though it had been smashed, its broken state was evidently the result of human hands. There was nothing beyond the hole, of course, a sheer cliff straight down to the concrete eight stories below. <laughs> What did he just say? My breath caught. Was this how he had made five people jump off? It was as Sarah had said, after all. I had no other options but to die as well. I had to jump from here. <laughs> Technically, we could die anyway. What was I supposed to do? I thought about taking the best possible course of action, but delusions of the worst case scenario of all things, of potential patterns churned around and around in my head, and I couldn't get my brain working properly. Save me. Somebody. Nanami's voice echoed in my panicked ears. Nanami flickered before my eyes, smiling and gesturing casually. It was my fault. Nanami had absolutely nothing to do with it, yet Shogun had abducted her and cut her arm off because of me. I'm sorry, Nanami. I'm sorry. I wiped my tears, but still more overflowed even so, and I wiped them again. And I steadily drew closer to the broken open hole in the midst of my fogging field of sight, and tentatively took a look out at the, cr at the ground. Without any warning, a huge cheer burst up, one that resembled the rumbling of the earth. The vast herd had gathered in the plaza and the media. The ones who had gathered for some event that was apparently, or that was preparing to begin at just the same time. An onslaught of dazzling light hit me. I automatically narrowed my eyes and turned my face away. 
which brought the Jumbotron and the building next door into view, and without any room for doubt, the thing projected there was... Me. Eh? Me? Reflected on the Jumbotron screen, my face was sloppy with tears, and I had my mouth half open like a dumbass. On top of that, my back was hunched. At first, I thought it was a hallucination. Next, I had chills, thinking it was a recording of me that had been secretly filmed somewhere. Going further, I began to suspect a film Shogun had taken of my thoughts was being played back there. At last, I realized it showed me here in this place at this very moment. The live video running on the Jumbotron even came with sensationalistic taglines. 100% live broadcast from Shibuya Station. The Miracle Esper Boy makes his debut. A ribbon of explanatory text scrolled along the bottom of the screen. A miraculous Esper Boy introduced to us by the world class psychic, eh, world class psychic Yuri Brightman. His urgent live performance. Can he scry the identity of the new gen perp? When I read it, I understood at last. The media crews and rubberneckers gathered at the scramble crossing were all watching. Me. Don't look at me. Why are you scrutinizing someone like me? Esper boy? What the hell? Okay, um, I realize that this is a... Now we go into a delusion. But... We are at the 46, almost 47 minute mark now. This is starting to drag on now. So we're going to go ahead and end this here. I will see you all next time. A quick reminder before I go ahead and leave, though, that I do have a Discord link down below in the description. If you want to stay up to date on what's going on with the channel, I do highly recommend that you join that. That is my go-to place for posting about changes to scan yeah, the channel schedule and things of that nature. Sometimes I remember to post elsewhere. Usually I don't. So like I said, if you want to know what's going on with the channel, I do highly recommend that you join the uh the discord down there in the description you will also find a link to my patreon as well as a stream labs donation link those are the two major ways to support the channel patreon comes with some goodies such as early access to videos while stream labs helps the channel out more because i'm pretty sure nobody takes a cut at all in the case of stream labs i know stream labs doesn't take a cut but i i believe if you do do a donation via Streamlabs. I don't think anybody actually takes a cut of the transaction. Uh, as a result, it helps the channel out a lot more because the channel takes home, I'm pretty sure, 100% of whatever you give. Uh, if it's not exactly 100%, it's pretty damn close. Because um, I know in the case of Patreon, because I have an older account, I'm grandfathered into the old 5% cut that Patreon takes. Nowadays, if I were to make my account, they would take 8% at the tier that I currently reside at. Uh, but yeah, so that is going to be it for this part, like I said. I will see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.